there's this great technology available in Android called Google Now, and I'd love to tell a little story about it. Like last night, I went to a restaurant in Japantown, and like I just swiped onto my phone, and I saw all these great things that were going on all around me. There was this museum I could visit. There was the menu for the restaurant that I was actually in. There were reviews of that restaurant, and thankfully, they were good reviews, because so, I discovered it after I was in there. And it's all this great stuff that Google Now will actually give you. But today, I'm going to be speaking with our partner, who this morning had a great keynote. And one of the things that stood out was that while my smartphone was already smart, you're working on things to make it even smarter. Right? Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, I love my smartphone. I think they're getting smarter over the years. But I think the motivation was to say, look, I, we really want the technology to work for you. Right? Like, yeah. can we make the phone do more of the work for you so that you can get on with your life? That's right. kind of our, I mean, if you think about it, that sounds crazy and ambitious. Um, but we feel like we've kind of taken a few early sure. steps towards that. Take moonshots, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and in some of the things you've been doing about that, the way I understand you've been thinking about it is that you think really in terms of context and the things that are around you, and you know answers to the things that you might want to know, and then actions that you can take. And can you can talk us through that process? You've been paying attention to the keynote. Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. It was uh, hard not to. It was <laughs> awesome. No, look. I mean, I think that in fact, if you think about it, the like it sounds super cliché, it's super obvious. But mobile changes everything, right? In terms of how you find information, how you act on it. And then when we thought, when you think about it, like, okay, that's the department of obvious. Yeah. But then if you unpack it, right, actually the three things going on here. One is, of course, the fact that you know, your phone is with you all the time, right? The, like, take the, my Disneyland example from morning. The fact that you're there is, is enough of a cue that you, know, you need certain things. You don't have to actually spell it out. You don't have to go to like a box and like spell out, oh, I need X, Y, and Z. Right, so the phone is a lot of this implicit context. Context is the new black, right? Like there's a whole bunch of information that you should be able to tee up. Your right. smartphone should be able to tee up without you having to sweat, right? Sure. So that's one, one key insight. And that's when we started saying, well, what are the kinds of contexts where we can help? Okay. A place is certainly one of them, like your Japantown example. But then sometimes the context is kind of in your head, right? So in my case, for example, I love cricket. And I watched the World Cup, I was maniacally focused on that, right? And so any information around that, you, I don't have to spell it out. Give it to me, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's another context we think about. Right. And then I think the other kind of context uh, we start to think about is just time, right? So the fact that you know, around Thanksgiving, you need certain things, you know, you're like, or Halloween, you're looking up pumpkin patches. So how do you kind of really bring a lot more information without you having to spell out is our like, key motivation for this. Yeah. And then, of course, it gets to answers and actions sure. in that. And, and the context of places, it's not just that this place is in this location, right? It's like if it's a restaurant, you've got the opening hours, you've got the menus, you've got yep. all that kind of stuff, which is... Yeah, exactly. I mean, nobody thinks about, like, oh, I'm in this lat long, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. You're actually saying, oh, this is a restaurant or this is a mall. At the mall, you want the directory. At, yeah. you know, at uh, the airport, you want the terminal map or whatever. Yeah. So in some sense, it's like you're trying to get stuff done in right. a place. You're not just there for the sake of it. So how do you kind of get, help you get stuff done? Yeah, and, and it's funny you mentioned the Cricket World Cup because that's a great example that I was in Australia back in January and I didn't know about the Cricket World Cup and I'm from Ireland and I heard that Ireland were going to be in the yes. Cricket World Cup. So I Googled for like Ireland in the Cricket World Cup and then Google Now started giving me all this information like when they were going to play and the games that they won and the games that they lost and you know, all this kind of, it, I just, it, was, it was really enriching and it was really delightful to actually have it. And so some of the other things that you spoke about now that some of the future things that you were talking about were Google Now and this Google Now on tap, like yep. what's that going to be bringing? to us? Not beer, <laughs> but, but the idea was simple, right? Which is like saying, look, like I was saying, how can we bring you answers and actions in context? But then if you think about it, the context is not just, you know, places, time and interest, but really often the context is what you're doing in that moment, right? You know, you were making dinner plans, so you're kind of, or you're talking about a movie, like in that context, in that specific moment, what do you need? So we're kind of saying, okay, how do we take this assistance that we're starting to build with now? but then put it to use in that precise moment. Nice. And that's kind of the idea behind Now on Tap. Right. And I, I liked your Disney example. It was like, instead of just telling me like, you know, what I can do in Disney, it's also got information like how long the line is for this yeah. ride. And yeah. you know, that, that's really, really handy stuff. So yeah. cool. And with, um, and with Now on Tap, the other thing that's interesting is we started out thinking, oh, we should get you quick, in, quick answers. Like, you know, you're, you and I are talking about a movie, give you the movie information. But with user studies, we actually found another use case, right? So one of the things people said is, oh, I have another thing that I'm super annoyed with smartphones, which is I'm reading something, like actually this just happened to me, right? I was reading some article about, uh, I don't know, free range parenting, okay. and then I have to come do this. Okay. And so I have two choices now. Either I lose track of it forever, 
Okay. Or I just like fudge in my phone right before I come here and like, you know, take 15 steps and add this to my calendar or whatever else, right? right. So one of the things we're saying is in that moment, can you just like put a single button push and just say, hey, Google now, get this back to me when I can read it, okay. when I have the context of reading it. Yeah, like you saw with the Hugh Laurie example, yep. right? It was like you're looking into him and you, you held it's it down. It's a quick question. I don't want to have yeah. to like, you know, go through 15 steps just to get a quick question answered. That's kind of the... And, and it was really funny because it was like when I was watching your keynote and I was like, I know Hugh Laurie from somewhere. And when you push that and then there was like a little icon of an old British TV show called Blackadder and he was yeah, in that and I was like... Uh, exactly. Hey, Sometimes you just have to see it for a couple seconds. Actually, this happened to me. So I always get confused between... Um, I still am confused between Helen Hunt and Holly Hunter. Okay. Like that always trips up. Helen they're Hunt, two. Holly Hunter. Yeah, they're like that. two Hollywood actresses, and I was like, which one is it now? On an article, and I was like, okay, let me top, tap on Holly, and it's like, oh yeah, it's the other one. <laughs> right? Cool, cool. Now, so, so this is great stuff for like the end user. How about for like for developers? What kind of goodness That's do we have? That's a pretty cool thing here. I think for developers, um, there's a couple things, right? So one. Your app, you don't have to change anything. That's why we are using kind of the platform API to make this work, and which is the reason we have to we roll it out in M, Android M. Okay. Um, but the other thing is like, you know, if for Tomorrowland or for restaurants or whatever, if you have an app that can get something useful done for that kind of a use case, you can start surfacing here, right? Which is pretty cool, nice. right? It's a new way. Of course, now today you can surface in Google Play. Right. So Google search as well. This is the third way that yeah. you can kind of reach users. So, so if you're a domain expert in something like you know coffee shops that have great latte right. art, yeah, you can build the app yeah. around that and then get Surface to users yep. through now on tap, if you excuse the pun. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty good. And when can we expect to see this? This is an Android M? Yes, it's, so. it'll roll out with Android M in a couple months. OK. Uh, we'll, we should see some updates to the developer preview as well. Nice. So lots of great stuff to look forward in Android M. Google on tap, uh, sorry, Google Now on tap is one of them. So I'm really excited for that. Thank you so much for Thank this. Thank you. Afrana. You know, folks, download the developer, M, the developer preview for M today. And you, know, you won't have the Google Now in that yet, but it's coming very, very soon. So Thank thanks, you. Afrana.